two, one, and we're live. Hey, everyone. Hey. Oh, oh, my voice cracked again. That happened last week. Are you going through puberty? I guess so. Is it like third puberty or something? I don't know. Hey, those of you watching, even though you stick to low-carb alcoholic beverages, do you still struggle with lack of results on keto? You need to stick around for today's show because we're going to talk about why. So welcome. 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 Welcome to Keto Chat Live. I'm your host, Carol Freeman, board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist. And I'm just Simon. I don't know. I'm not Simon? specialist in anything, but I uh, really, well, last week we gave you a certification honorary. Oh, Nancy's here again. Hello, Nancy. Nancy. Um, I think it's important to actually tell people that you're a stand up comedian because. That some of the things we've been talking about might make more sense. You know, when you say you have shows and things like that, um, they might I've got be one shows in different area codes. Yeah, you know, stand up comedian. I'm getting back out there. It feels good now that COVID's finally coming to a close, even though some people don't think it's coming to a close and want to stay in lockdown forever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, slowly across the country, lockdown is lifting different places and more places are doing shows. And I'm coming out of my shell. So you were a snail? Is that what you were? Or a crab? Either way, you should be dipped in butter because both of those are really good with butter on them. And that's very keto to dip me in butter. So that's <laughs> yes. really good that we would do that. Um, yes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, before we kick it off, though, I uh, want to let you guys know this show is meant for educational entertainment purposes only. Some of you are like, you call this entertainment? <laughs> right. <laughs> This hey, Nancy not, keeps coming back every week, so that's good. Yeah, this is not medical advice, nor is intended to diagnose, treat, cure any condition. If you have any medical condition, illness, or disease, or you're taking any medications, please share. And uh, for questions, concerns related to any medical conditions you have, please contact your medical professional. And uh, yeah, or a stand-up comedian, and they'll come on over and help you out. Wait, wait till you see our, cl our closing for today. I have a little, uh, I have a little bonus, uh, written in there for you. So a little behind, behind baseball here. I write the outline for our show every week. And, uh, Simon's just surprised by what I tell him to say. He doesn't even know what he's supposed to say. So wait I've till been in relationships before. So I just let the woman tell me what to say. And I say, Oh yes, that's what we're doing. <laughs> you know, it works well. Uh, works everybody's well. happy that way. Yeah. Um, so people watching and Simon, you, you, do you, do you drink alcohol? What, what's your favorite low carb adult beverage? If you do drink, let us know those of you watching join in. This is, this is a interactive show. Yeah. I mean the best low carb uh, beverage is just tequila on the rocks. Okay. Yeah. The best. Well, some people would argue that that's not the best, but that's I like a gin martini. Okay. I like whiskey, scotch, wine. Few choices there. Nice. Yeah. Vodka yeah. and Capri Sun, where you just pour it into the Capri Sun through the straw. You just walk around. Oh, Capri Sun's not low carb. So that's that's what's wrong. That's what's been messing with your results. All those Capri Suns. Are you sure? I don't think they would give it to kids if it wasn't healthy, you know? <laughs> right? That that and goldfish crackers, right? Yeah, right. It's healthy, yeah. Yeah. It's made, of, it's made of fish, so it's gotta be good. Totally. Okay. Uh, what about you, Carol? What are you drinking today? Well, today I'm actually just drinking Topo Chico. Uh, okay. I'm hosting a a comedy open mic tonight. So I, you know, nice. I, take, I stay dry until after, you know, I've gotten going well, after midnight so, and you let it all hang out. Then I turn into a gremlin. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but kind of, you know, my most common go-to is going to be just vodka and soda club soda. Um, we can get bougie out here in the Southwest and do vodka Topo Chico, which is just Mexican, uh, mineral water, um, which is uh, carbonated. It's like Mexican club soda. Um, with a lime, um, you know, some clean crafted wine as well. Wine's going to have a little bit more carbs, but I do like a uh, nice dry red wine. What do you mean clean crafted? What's that mean? Um, well, there's a company that um, I am an affiliate for called um, Scout and Cellar, and they label themselves as being clean crafted. Now, they will get 
it's not it's against uh company rules to say that it's keto friendly they don't they don't allow us to say that so i'm not saying that at all no you uh, would never do anything like that i'm not saying that at all carol um, would never break company rules right right i already had one of my instagram videos taken down because i violated that so i would never ever say that again that it's keto friendly yeah she's getting um, a cease and desist from mark I, zuckerberg at the moment <laughs> I've I've learned my lesson. I will never ever say that their clean crafted wine is keto friendly, uh, even though we've done a a, a a test of that. So actually, I've got a YouTube video somewhere back there a couple of years ago where we uh, tested the the wine, you know, tested our ketones and blood sugar and and the wine, and it didn't affect uh, our ketosis at all. So I can't okay. claim that it is, but I've shown Can you just shown claim that it's friendly. <laughs> like this wine is friendly, friendly, not keto yes. friendly. This is friendly wine. It's friendly, yeah. It's never said a rude thing. Um, when the you pop the cork, it's like, hi, good to see you again. Yeah, at least um, the wine is excited to see me. Yeah. <laughs> now their their definition of clean crafted is. Uh, See if I, I, I'm not a very good rep for this company, but like crafted, um, pretty good craft. Yeah, uh, you know they wash their hands before they squeeze the grapes. Uh, no, whoa, 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 time out. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to? Or is that where the flavor comes from? Uh, haven't you seen those um, shows on TV where they squish the grapes at their feet? Do you think they wash them first? I would hope so. Have you heard of grape must? Um, you must wash your feet before you stomp the grapes. Um, I have. <laughs> well, the best of my memory of what I'm allowed to say about Clean Crafted is it's uh, organic and or biodynamic. They don't have added dyes or other chemicals to the wines that a lot of them have. And um, we're also not allowed to say that it doesn't make you have a ha hangover. Uh, we're not allowed to claim that at all. Um However, there's association with additives in wine and not feeling very good the next day. So also not claiming that. Yeah, um, but really fancy wine isn't putting in additives, is it? Um, some of them. So here's one of the tests. If you drink red wine and your teeth turn, get stained from it, that's an indicator that they've added dye to it. Um, red wine should not stain your teeth. And um, the reason they add dyes to it is, is because people like to see the same color. And there is variation from, you know, year to year in the wine. And to get that standardization of the colors, they'll add, they'll add dye to it too. So what if you mix it with a Capri Sun? How do you know, is it the wine or the Capri Sun, which is. Standing? Well, Capri Suns, from what I remember, Capri Suns, those are clear. Um, so it definitely would be the wine. Um, now, since Capri, clear. West Capri Suns have, you, you're going to have to go buy one for, for science now to find out, but I think they're clear. Uh, okay. maybe light pink, maybe, I don't know. Uh, they definitely have too much sugar in them, though. Um, the other thing that clean crafted wine is going to be, um, fully fermented. It doesn't have a lot of residual sugars in it and, and residual carbs. And so it's going to be some of the lower, lower carb wines that you can find. So I'm down. Yeah. All yeah. right. Look it up. <laughs> A couple episodes ago, Amy, or Amy, uh, sorry, Nancy remembers this is Simon wants a present for doing something he's supposed yeah. to do. So yep. in, in, in addition to the Denali, you now want a uh, clean crafted wine. Yeah. Okay. That'd work. You want like a truckload. Like, I know that, like, what do you call the back area in an, uh, in an SUV? Like, I know cars have a trunk, but what's the area in the back of an SUV that's like, I'll open there. The caboose? The Yeah. Oh yeah. The caboose. Okay. The caboose. The the butt side. Okay. Fill the butt of your Denali with wine. All right. Yeah. Put the okay. put wine in your butt. And what is it? Hold on. Keep going, Carol. So what hold on. <laughs> so you're telling them to drink wine in the butt. No, no. I think that's a South Park thing. Um Wait, it gets you drunk or quicker when you just Okay. Drink. All right. All right, frat boy. <laughs> yeah, you just get a really close friend with a syringe if you're on a budget. On a budget. Okay. So it makes your, makes your really high quality wine go further. Yeah. This we is, mentioned this is not medical advice. Right. We exactly. Hopefully you find the entertainment in this, anyone who's watching. So yeah, we haven't okay. got a, we have not gotten any emoticon reacts yet so i don't know we should try harder we haven't got a thumbs up we haven't got a heart we haven't got a laugh 
but also we haven't got an angry face. So that's where I, I say that's a win. All right. Well, maybe we need to try harder anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> try harder. We're, we're going to try uh, harder. So what do we well, got next? What's coming well, down? What do we got? Before we talk about uh, easy rule number seven. So if you're just tuning in, this is a 10 part series to start our podcast. Uh, the 10 easy, the 10 rules to follow. Uh, to get started or restarted on keto for the best results. So if you're somebody who uh, wondering how to get going with keto and you're not getting results, or you're somebody who's had some results in the past and you're like struggling to get back on track, this series is for you. So today is rule number seven of that. So if you, after you're done listening to this, if you haven't ca caught the other six episodes, go back and listen to those. Uh, and then we've got some more coming. And after we get through the 10, we're going to be doing uh, listener questions and just topics and things like that that I see coming up over and over again with our clients. So, Great. Um, oh boy, here we go. I think this guy's here to see you, Simon. Um, Gary Hansen. Um, okay, Gary. Yeah. Um, um, he's here for the quality content. You. Your mother is very proud of you, Gary. Yeah. Why does his p profile picture look like a mugshot? It looks like his family came to visit him while he was in prison. Um, is that what that looks like to you too? Yeah, I don't know, Gary. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Behave yourself, Thank Gary. You know, I have the I have the power to boot people permanently from the show. So, uh, oh yeah, no, here he goes. He's doing some other stuff. So we're gonna have to ban Gary. Bye, okay. Gary. Have a good day, Gary. Yeah. I take it back. Your own mother hates you. <laughs> All right. I gave him a very short leash to see if he was funny and he was just going to go gross. All right. So, yay. Our second internet troll of the show. So, all right. Yeah, well, you know, um, Carol is a training therapist, Gary. So get at her and she will uh, help you with your psychological issues. Mm. And uh, yeah. And you don't have to sit at home alone all day masturbating while playing Nintendo Gary, you can actually maybe make a friend. Gary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let that be a lesson. You, you're all welcome to interact on the show as long as you behave yourself. So yeah, we don't have a room for time, Don't, don't get rid of guys like Gary until I make fun of them for at least. Okay. Seconds, so then you okay. Can, well, you can still do it. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I already raised my son, Gary. I don't need to raise another, another child here on the internet. So, uh, um, all right. Back to our regularly scheduled content here. Back to um, our non-Gary scheduled freaking content. Yeah. Rat turd bastard. Okay, keep going. <laughs> um, so Simon found a news article for me. I yeah, did. before we get to rule number seven today, uh, we're going to do our news article of the day. So th okay. those of you watching... If you've got a, a news article about keto research or just a pop culture article out there, go ahead and send those into us and uh, we'll review that on a, on a future episode and we'll tell you. I mean, we're not going to let Gary send anything in. I'm not going to read anything Gary ever sends me, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gary, you're not allowed to send anything in and yeah. you're probably also not allowed to come around your children anymore, court ordered. <laughs> so why don't you get your shit together, Gary? Is probably why he's bored and trolling on the internet is because he's not allowed to leave his house. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah, Gary, um, listen, if you just, you know, start acting better, they'll take the ankle bracelet off and you can leave your house. So in the maybe. meantime, we have an article. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to put this in the show. The, let's see the comments right here. So that those of you watching live can follow along here. Oh man, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Hopefully that doesn't. Um, um, so Simon oh, found this Mexican article. Mexican club soda. Huh? What it gets you. It's, maybe it's the Mexican club soda that gets you sneezing. Really? I'm allergic to it? Maybe it's I this high know. quality, uh, clean crafted glass bottle. Maybe it's the uh, cocaine you did before the show. To oh no, the don't start those rumors now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although yeah. it is keto, but that's not, you know. Are you allowed to say cocaine's keto friendly or is that something? I don't know. I'm I'm setting up the podcast and I have to pick whether it's clean or explicit. And so I'm like, I uh I don't think we've said any swear words on here, but um said one. Talked, I said one. We talked about circumcision. Um but a PG thirteen movie, you can say one F word. So if we say one a season, really? we're okay, right? Yeah. Can you? 
Yeah, yeah. PG thirteen. Yeah. Okay. God, Here's Michelle. Know. Michelle said, I'm getting back on keto day three. Should I have my carbs if I'm exercising nine minutes or more daily? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> really? No. Even on day three? No. So, so exercise doesn't earn you more carbs. Um, and so if you need to eat more calories, it's going to be something where it's like, you're going to be eating more fat. You're probably going to be eating a lot more protein, but if your goal is to be in ketosis, it doesn't mean you eat more carbs because that's the one thing that's going to keep you in ketosis. So yeah, I have um, a question for Michelle. How are you noticing it's going with your workouts? Are you having energy? Are you not having energy on day three? What, it, what are you noticing? Well, and go back to Michelle. I, I don't think you've watched our past episodes, but go back to the episode that we had about uh, salt, because if you're exercising a lot, your salt needs are going to be really, really high. Um, which episode was our salt episode? Let me look here. Uh, episode number four was all about salt. And so for ex lots of daily exercise, like you're going to need tons and tons of salt. Um, grab a copy of the salt fix, Michelle, if you don't have that yet. He's got very specific um, exercise salt recommendations in there about how much you need, uh, depending on how much you're exercising and what the temperature is. So, um, yeah, but the question is, I'm, I'm curious. For, I drink yeah, salt daily. Okay, drink, drinking right. salt daily is not going to. There, there, your your dosage may be enough. So that's you know something we're fine tuning with. Um, yeah, again, uh, one and a half teaspoons a daily. Uh, grab the book, Michelle. You're going to need way, way, way more than that. So if you're not getting enough salt, you're not going to have very much energy on your workout. Why so. more? Because she's working out? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. see, because I was talking today to my buddy. I've been working with this personal trainer because uh, I need to uh, get my ass in gear. Uh, darn it, we said two swear words now. <laughs> now we're kicked out of the clean... But no, and, and he was telling me he went ketogenic for a year and a half because he wanted me on like one of those like diets where you eat every three hours. And I said to him, I said, look, I just function better as a fat burner than a sugar burner. Yeah. Like, OK, that's cool. He said I was ketogenic for a year and a half. But he also said that he felt that it was uh, his workouts weren't as he didn't have enough energy for his workout. So that's a sign of not enough salt. hundred percent. Yeah. OK. Yep. I've got my, I've got one of my current clients right now. There's a CrossFitter, you know, yeah. hour of intense workout and a bunch of other stuff. And, um, she's at the point of like probably three to four teaspoons of salt a day is what she needs. Um, I just want to be a jeans fitter, like fit into yeah. my jeans. <laughs> Not a CrossFitter. <laughs> yeah. What does it take uh, to be a jeans fitter? Like, where you yeah, just, yeah. You know, those, that's great. No, yeah. That, no, but that's you know, a great... like, no, but you know, when you'll gain weight, this happened to me a couple of times in my life because I sat on my butt all of COVID and then you'll gain weight and then you're like, oh, should I go out and buy new clothes? But then you just lose 10 pounds. You're like, oh, I just got a whole new wardrobe because of all the things I couldn't wear. I get to wear again. Yeah. We call that closet shopping. You get to go in Is your it? closet and go shopping. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to... Uh, Simon found a random article for me to review for us here today. So I put Good that in article. the notes there. Uh, it is, what's this source? Northwestern uh, Medicine. I don't know. I think that's the college. North is that Western? the college, Northwestern? Northwestern Medicine. I got to look. Um, yeah, no, that's Northwestern College. Northwestern, I found Harvard, Northwestern. You know, they're also the Huskies, by the way, I think. like. North uh, uh, why is Northwestern in the Northeast, though? Okay, that's a really good question the, for another episode. But yeah, no, North, you know Northwestern, right? No, is you're you're serious? It's on the East Coast. Yeah, I think it's in like. Um, that's funny. I want to say it's in like Indiana or something. Every once in a while, they got a good football team. Cracks okay. the top twenty-five. Yeah. All right. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. They don't know their uh, compass directions, but they've got a good college. Cool. 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 Uh, all right, so this is an article, Pros and Cons of the Ketogenic Diet from Northwestern Medicine website, so nm.org. Uh, I have not previewed this article. Simon just found it literally two minutes before we came on the air, so let's see what this is all about. Um, what do you need to know? Though it may seem new to your news feed, the ketogenic diet has been around since the 1920s. That Chicago, is they're in Chicago. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. They're in Chicago. So why is it called Northwestern? Oh, maybe Northwestern Ohio or something. Maybe they're in northwest of Chicago. Okay. Or maybe this is 
before the Louisiana Purchase, and this was the Northwest. I don't know. Okay. I mean, okay. That's I, a good I, theory. Yeah. Good yeah. Theory. I buy that. I buy that. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> at one time, this was the Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. Not our fault the country got bigger. Uh, expect well, us to yeah. pay all those legal fees to change our name now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so they're saying the the ketogenic diet has been around for the night since the 1920s. Uh, low carb carbohydrate, high fat diet to reduce seizures in pediatric patients with epilepsy. That's easy for me to say. Absolutely true. However, um, low carb diets for weight loss have been around since the 1800s. So yeah, since, uh, since when uh, Northwestern was in the Northwest. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we, we, I think a couple episodes ago is where I covered like kind of the origins of, of keto a little bit, another article that we were breaking down. So, uh, Oh, speaking of breaking down, uh, there's breaking down the keto diet. And actually years ago, I was on an, ep I was on a podcast called break it down with Matt Carter. I think anyways, full circle here. Um, the keto diet is all about cutting carbs, eating more fat, um, See, okay, so here's one of the myths they've got here is that they're, you know, 5% from carbs, 20% protein, 75% fat. Uh, it turns out for weight loss ketogenic diet, which is what, frankly, what most people are going to be following this for, um, the percentages don't have anything to do with that. So go back to our past episodes, uh, catch up on all that as the percentages actually don't uh, matter. Unless you're trying to do a medical therapeutic di keto diet, then um, that is the way you're going to actually calculate it medically. So uh, they're saying the pros are weight loss. Okay. That's what we're here for. Um, now it says there's anecdotal evidence of people losing weight on keto. That's, that's funny. Cause there's not, there's like, there's tons and tons of research on uh, keto for weight loss. Um, it's the most research weight loss diet that there is, and it's the most uh, effective. So there's tons of that. So, okay. So they found one article that said that there was a little bit of evidence, but uh, there's a lot more than that. Um, and people feel less hungry because the fatty foods take longer to break down their body. Um, uh, that's not really what's going on. That's a nice guess. <laughs> um, really there is actually affecting different satiety hormones. Um, it's also probably activating leptin, which is a hormone in our body that, um, makes us feel satiated, not hungry. So it's not really about that. The, uh, you know, foods take a long time to break down. That has nothing to do with it. Um, also, there's some thought too that the ketones themselves suppress appetite too. So, um, and no more low fat. Um, let's see, what are they saying about that? Um, but eating, burning fats by eating more of them is enticing, which is why the diet became popular. Uh, so, oh, so they're basically saying like, it's delicious. You can eat all these high fat foods. Um, that's another benefit, um, health benefits for specific people. So they're saying that, uh, epilepsy or people with epilepsy can benefit from keto. That's very true. Um, endurance athletes and bodybuilders also use it to scrap fat in short time frames. Hmm. Um, Bodybuilders don't really do keto that much, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, they don't. I was typical keto, but bodybuilders want to get humongous. They don't, you know, they don't yeah, want to get lean. We do, we do have some uh, people out there that are keto bodybuilders. So uh, Robert Sykes, Keto Savage is one of those. Hold on, uh, like legitimately entering competitions for bodybuilding or like he just likes to power lift? Oh, no, he's, yeah, he's won one word. So like... Uh, have you, you know, seen him in a speedo flexing on stage? Yeah, I've got yes. Uh, well, not personally. I didn't go to How his was show. That for you? But I've been I've been on a cruise with him. Uh, you know, I've been at conferences with him. He is an adorable young man. Uh, very good shape. And actually, he met his girlfriend. Like she used to work in Spokane, Washington, at a um, I think it was like at a. Uh, I'm gonna. This may be totally wrong, but I seem to remember she worked as a barista at a coffee shop. So um, okay. Yeah. Cool. So, and then he helped he her train. He helped. <laughs> well, he's got a girlfriend now or may, I, actually they're married now. Um, but, uh, okay. Sure. When we don't we, here on the keto chat live. We don't condone extramarital flexing. Yes. Yes. Keep the flexing in your bedroom. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Or on stage. And so he trained his wife and her first competition. She won, uh, oh, as cool. well too. So it, it wow. is, you're right. But also, it's not the most common way that most people are doing bodybuilding. And also most endurance athletes aren't using 
it as well. But we do have some uh, researchers and people that are um, fat burning athletes that do very well. So, um, yeah. and actually there's tons and tons of health benefits to it as well. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of physicians. I've mentioned them on past episodes, Dr. Adam Nally, uh, Dr. Eric Westman, um, uh, Jeffrey Gerber, uh, Ted Naiman in Seattle, just to name a few. These are clinicians that have been doing this for a long time. And basically These are doctors we, that are also bodybuilders, <laughs> not bodybuilders, but they're in you good shape. In a speedo. Yeah. And they've, they've all you said have. like, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I've never seen any of them in a speedo. Be honest, you know, Carol. It's okay. You, this is fun. Cause it's like, I got a train of thought and you're heckling me so that I'm like, I'm not answering your <laughs> questions. So, <laughs> um, don't make me talk about your mom putting you in the basement today. So, <laughs> um, I've never seen any of them in a speedo. Um, okay. I have been on a uh, Dr. Naaman uh, does lots of shirtless selfies on Twitter. So oh, um, follow yeah. Dr. Naaman. For yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The other ones I've been at various conferences. Um, Ted Naaman was also on a cruise ship that I was on as well. I didn't Maybe ever get more shirtless selfies. Like, <laughs> flexing we'd get more followers to the show do you think that's a good marketing strategy let's all right go for it simon let's uh right now <laughs> i mean you brought it up <laughs> i'm not gonna just, I, like hulk hogan just ripped my shirt yeah. off and we can't we can't maintain our clean status clean crafted show status no. if I'm shirtless, so sorry. No, but we would get um, a lot of followers, Carol. Yeah. That's something you should consider. I'm, just I'm sure Gary's very disappointed that this is not a shirtless show. Oh, yeah. Nancy's voting for you to take your shirt off, too. So she's here yeah, for I it. think Gary's disappointed in a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Started with his grade point average. <laughs> ended to his sex life. Oh, yes. Fucking Gary. Nobody's more disappointed than all of his family. So, um. All right. Uh, yeah. So t anyways, all the doctors that I've not seen in Speedos that some of them I've seen shirtless on media, social media, um, okay. they all say that everything that you can measure clinically gets better on keto. So not just these few things that they're saying here, um, but basically everything. And for my clients as well, I'm having them get labs. We're watching everything get better over time as well, too. So it's much more than just epilepsy and bodybuilding. <laughs> um and okay, so oh, I love their cons. Okay, these are going to be fun to uh, to dis to, um, dispel here. So okay. difficult to sustain. Okay, so name a diet out there. Name a weight loss diet out there that's easy to sustain. Uh, the uh, Atkins diet, where you just acting like you're on a diet. <laughs> The just seafood diet where you see food and you just eat a tub of ice cream. Yeah. The seafood diet where you see food and eat it. That's an easy yeah. one to sustain. Yeah. Um, the yes, Snickers Nancy. diet. Yeah, absolutely. Arthur's arthritis gets better. Everybody I've ever worked with um, had arthritis to start with. And uh, the pain dramatically goes down. So not only is it healing the, the joints, but it's also the, the pain and inflammation reduce as well. Well, I'm ready, dude. I'm down. I'm back on it, man. I'm back on it. We've got Sue from London. Hi there. Hi, Sue. I don't... Uh, these mystery people. I hope they, I hope they cool. have positive things to contribute here. So I like Sue um, from London. I just don't want to get sued from London. That's yeah. The Ooh. Yeah. Avoid. Do they have... Cool. Yeah, that sounds... Because then you'd have to go into court with those people that wear the powdered wigs. Is that what yeah, happens right. there? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, Sue. Welcome. Yeah, glad you're here. Um, okay, so let me let me run through these like their fake cons that they've got. Okay, difficult to sustain. Um, first off, you said up here that uh, Northwest, you said that one of the pros is how tasty the food was, and now you're saying it's difficult to sustain. Well, I've got news for you. Any dietary change is difficult to sustain. There's nothing about keto that makes it harder. In fact, my clients find when they've compared it to their decades of dieting that they've been doing. Otherwise, yeah. keto is one of the most delicious ways of eating. So yeah. the truth is any diet change is difficult, and you have to have the right um approach and you have to have the right long-term support to make any type of long-term change. So you know what I find easier to sustain about this than other diets is once you get in ketosis, 
and then you like mess up one night, you eat something you're really not supposed to like bread or whatever, you feel, you, you feel it right away. You yeah. feel that difference to the neck. You're not going to do it again. Whereas on a lot of diets, you'll be out and you'll be, let's say you'll be on your diet really well for six days. And then you're going out for the night and they bring out dessert and you're like, Oh, I'm just going to have a slice and you have a slice and then, okay, whatever. And then you're back on your diet, but you still cheated. Mm -hmm. This is like, yeah, you can't cheat on this as well. So it yeah. really keeps you within the, the framework. Yeah. 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 That's one of the things that going into it for me, um, I found was much easier because it's much more black and white, right? Whereas regular dieting is just like, you get this many calories. And if you see a dessert at an event, you're just kind of like, well, I'll just eat less tomorrow. Right. Like, yeah, right. Or you, yeah. Or you, let's say it's a great example. Like you'll go to a wedding and you'll be like, Oh, I've been going really good for 30 days, but it's my, you know, cousin's wedding. Right. right? And then you'll break it for the wedding, but you don't do that on keto. Cause you're going to have a horrible wedding. You're going to feel. <laughs> yeah. Wedding. Yeah. And that, that's the one time since I've been keto and we're coming really close to my six year anniversary. Um, but one time over the last six years, I've had something with sugar in it. Uh, just kind of, and it was at a wedding actually, which is funny. Uh, I had a little bit cause I'm like, well, I'm going to have a little bit. Yeah. I've, horrible. Yeah. I felt absolutely horrible. I had a headache. I was miserable. I was irritable. I just wanted to go to bed. I was achy. And yeah. I, I never, ever said you were even the one getting married. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. I just immediately felt like garbage. And so that was good because now that's a hard pass. Like I've never, ever since, and I was a big sugar person before. So yeah. Yeah. So, um, so this difficult to sustain, that's just a fake con. Um, you know, my, the it's research not a fake I, con is still a con. It's just, well, it's, it's not a, a keto con. con. It's, it's a comic con. con. It's, a, <laughs> it's like comic con, but you're not dressed up as Wolverine from the X-Men. It's, it's a common con. Common con. Common con. Yeah. Common yeah. con. Oh, yeah. Common con. Yes. Um, so it's a, yeah. Any change is difficult. Okay. Tell us something new. Uh, okay. All right. The next con here is ca calorie depletion. If you're trying to try, wait, what are, what are they talking about? Calorie depletion. They don't even address that. Okay. So this thing says calorie depletion and nutrient deficiencies. Okay. Calorie depletion. That means that you're running out of calories. Like well, here's what's interesting. Then they say due to these deficiencies, people also report feeling foggy and tired. How come before they said it's anecdotal, but now they say people report. Yeah. That yeah. Anecdotal. Look at you getting all scientific now. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. I um, rest my case. <laughs> so here's, the, yes, the nutrient deficiency thing is a total myth, um, you know, because they haven't actually researched it, right? So if they were going to actually want to prove this claim, they would follow people eating keto and they would look at their nutrient intake. But all they're doing is, well, since it's restricted, it must be missing nutrients. But guess what? On keto, especially the way that I teach it, we keep whole foods. We keep the foods that are the most nutrient dense foods. Okay. So imagine a diet where you're eating, uh, you know, steak and butter and broccoli, and you also have rice with that meal. Okay. Um, if we just remove the rice, the rice wasn't full of vitamins and minerals. We're not missing out. You're still eating all the other foods. Yeah, but fruit the is, balanced diet. lots of fruit is filled with it's vitamins not, and minerals. That, that's a myth as well. How is that a myth, Carol? That's not a myth. Really? So when's the last time you looked up the nutrients in any fruit? Like today. <laughs> so this is a, yeah, this is a little fun chat that I often do, you know, every other week with my clients when they ask something like this. So um, is, so I'll just take one example and you can actually look at like, you know, 200 years ago, what the common fruits and vegetables were that grew here in the United States. You know, a carrot, for example, was like thinner than my finger. Uh, you know, almost as thin as this hair. <laughs> um, and they've just been selectively bred over the last 200 years to be full of sugar. Nobody's selectively breeding apples, oranges, bananas, and carrots to be high in vitamins and minerals. They're just making them bigger and tasting better, which is more sugar. Um, so for example, apples. So when apple, yeah. apples are not native to the United States, they came over from London, England, 
uh, or the area. And um, um, they originally were just the tiny little crab apples. They didn't taste good. Who here has ever had like their family farm had crab apples on it? They're tiny little things. They're usually mealy. They're sour. They're not edible. They well, I've never had a family farm, but we did have a neighbor that had apples. Is that good enough for you? You're you were so missing out. Well, uh, the apples probably were not the Jamie? crab apples. <laughs> um, so those crab apples, the reason they were here is because they were a clean crafted water. <laughs> um, so you take those crab apples, you ferment them. Uh, it makes a low alcohol cider, but that's a way of purifying water um, because the fermentation process will kill off the bad bacteria. And so you ended up with like, so back then a common beverage was uh, homemade cider from these crab apples. So they were not a food that were eaten. They were a crop that was grown to make a way to purify water before we had ways of purifying water. So Fast forward 200 years and we've selectively bred these apples to have all the different varieties that are like the size of a small child's head. And you've never seen an article to show apples are a great source of vitamins and minerals because they haven't been bred that way. The reason they taste so good now compared to those crab apples is because they've been bred to be high in sugar. Um, so it is a myth that fruits are high in, in nutrients. So Sue says, I think that's true because during the war, they used carrots for sugar. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, beets as well were grown as a sugar product. Um, yeah. And you can, you can find images. I used to teach classes on all this. And so you can find images of what these food products look like long ago. Corn is another one, for example, that like was not, uh, you know, the big ears of corn that we see now is these little sparse. Uh, Are you really things. like talking smack about Granny Smith? They, they're, uh, they're a new creation. They've been they, Johnny Appleseed. I don't know much about him. I don't have any comments. I'm not a Johnny seed, Johnny Appleseed historian. So I don't know. Um, oh, really? so, anyways, so anyways, it's a myth that a keto diet is low in nutrients. In fact, we're actually eliminating the foods that are high in low nutrient, like basically high calorie, low nu nutrients. We're eliminating those and we're just, what you are eating is going to be high in nutrients. So, uh, you know, nobody can tell me that like, uh, you know, bag of Doritos and going to McDonald's and, uh, you know, the buns and the rice and the pasta, those foods are not high in nutrients and also fruit as well. So, um, and you know, so this, this feeling foggy and tired symptoms, uh, keto flu, uh, that's lack of salt. So this is just, an, they basically have no idea what they're talking about. They're just kind of making up making up stuff and they're just passing it's a game of telephone so these type of articles are very common you can find a lot of them and they're written by a nurse a nutritionist a doctor or something like that but none of these people actually have any practical experience in implementing these in people so uh we should call them up and be like yo you don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> Uh, they're also saying that bad fats and practice, that's a whole other topic. I'll add that as one of our future topics about how saturated fat is actually one of the healthiest fats for us. Um, our bodies actually burn that more preferential, pre preferentially. Can you say that preferentially? Um, I think that's really the, I think that's really the big debate that's, uh, waging right now in the nutrition world, in the medical world is between you know, fat burner, sugar burner. I was just uh, talking to some friends. We had a little get together and they were saying that their father uh, had heart issues. He went in and they told him to, they put him on a diet of to get rid of saturated fat, get rid mm. of steaks, get rid of that stuff. Yeah, And that's one school of thought. And that, you know, then the other school of thought is the uh, Carol Freeman school of thought, which says the, uh, be a, be a fat burner, not a sugar burner, yeah. which is interesting, you know, I didn't invent this whole thing. I've just been studying it for six years. So <laughs> it's not the, and so there's actually, um, so what you're talking about where, uh, saturated fat and fat in general causes heart disease. What's something that's called the diet heart hypothesis. That's actually been disproven to be true. Um, but there's plenty of people out there that still think it's true. So there's a psychological phenomenon that when we believe something to be true for long enough, we can't easily unthink that to be true. Uh, even if we read 20 books and research articles, 
a big pile of them as tall as Simon is, uh, people will still say things like, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. Right. So it's just psychologically when we believe something to be true, it's hard to let go of that. So that's where, that's where that is. And so, you know, there's a ton of books that I could recommend on that. The big fat surprise is one of those, uh, very thick, uh, basically shows she went through, she spent 10 years research, researching that book. How is it that we were told that fat was really bad for us and what the truth is, what the research study is. And it is one of the most well-researched hypotheses out there. And they have not, they basically, it was, it's not true. There um, was an article I saw last week where there's this guy who is a investigative journalist. Okay. So he's not just writing an article. He's literally like going in, mm -hmm. searching out sources. And he said the keto, he was, the whole article was that he did lots and lots of studies and investigative, you know, he, he like dove in, he like went deep into the topics and he was saying the ketogenic diet is what you should do. And unfortunately it was behind a paywall, but the first paragraph, <laughs> let me tell you that first paragraph was really good. Awesome. Well, yeah. there's and a then lot I of hit a paywall and I was like, okay, there's a lot of books. Uh, you know, you get them from the library. Those are with not behind a paywall. Uh, you know, things like, um, eat rich, live long is another really good one that talks about why we were told that was all bad for us and what the science really shows. Um, yeah, those are a cu couple of them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, they also mentioned in this article too, renal risk. Um, that also isn't, um, uh, this isn't, so what they're citing here is that some, so a lot of the research on uh, ketogenic diets for epilepsy in little kids, they're on multiple medications as well. And so um, this is what, you know, the renal risk is there, but actually people on like, Dr. Jason Fung, who's in Canada, he started doing keto uh, diet implementation in his uh, patients who were renal patients because of diabetes. So renals are the kidneys <laughs> um, for the non-medical people. So Dr. Fung put people who had renal disease, kidney disease on keto and reversed that. So not only is it not true that it causes that, it actually treats renal disease. Um, there are comment here about like, okay, so it causes food obsession. And actually you can talk to all my clients and it actually does the opposite. Like you've said, when you're in ketosis, your appetite's really low. You don't have cravings. You're not wanting to eat those things. So, uh, no, and I you know you do. I, I did find myself getting a little, I, I wanted something crunchy. Mm. Like next time, now that I'm on it again and I'm just getting going, once that comes, I'm going to have to figure out like some type of, you know, like there's the cre cheese Parmesan crisps. Yeah. And it's just, it's just like a texture thing. It's not even a food craving thing, but you yeah. know, like every once in a while you want something crunchy, like a chip. Well, so or is that's, it just me? I just know that's, that's very true. Right. But it's, it's, uh, and I've added that for a future topic as well. Cause that's something I've studied a lot is the brain chemistry of cravings and urges to eat certain foods. So in okay. nature, in nature, there's no food that's naturally crunchy. Okay. What the, the, the desire for, well, but you're not, you're not, your craving for crunchy is not for an apple. It's for a chip, like you said. So the reason that people, have apple chips, <laughs> the reason that people have that association, like that craving is because your brain remembers crunchy snack foods were highly rewarding in the brain. So this is a topic for, um, actually, so, uh, We'll episode nine, episode nine. We're going to talk all about this. Okay. So nice. Make, that was a nice yeah. plug, Carol. I like put that. A, plug. Put a pin in that. Uh, if you're from the future, you can actually go listen to episode nine because it's already out. But if you're right now with us, um, then, um, then you have to wait a few weeks. So a couple weeks that will be coming out. So, um, yeah, so avoiding craving triggers, I'll, I'll break it all down. Why your brain wants those things. I've added a note that we'll talk about that, like desire for crunchy, you know, things like celery, that's going to be crunchy. You're right. The Parmesan crisps, crisps. There are those crunchy things that you can do. And Nancy suggests pork rinds. Simon's not going to eat uh, pork rinds because he's Jewish. So, uh, but you yeah. know, there's, there are chicken chips out there. So they're made from chicken skin. Really? Uh, yep. That may be a uh, flock is the company F L O C K. So that may be an option. Um, so there are, there are Jew Jewish friendly, uh, crunchy options on keto too. So they um, got new chips. <laughs> Wait, I can't, you can say that. I can't say that though. Right. 
I mean, you with could the, with a hard J. I'm not going to say that. Don't trick me. Um, hard J. <laughs> um, okay. Sue says you should have some nuts. Um, so yep. Sue, one of one of my um, one of my um, oh, I didn't get it in here. One of our top rules though is actually avoiding nuts for fast fastest results. Nuts are actually high carb and um, uh, high fat together, so they're. Um, Carol, don't ruin it. We want nuts. <laughs> Knock it off. Well, you guys want results. You don't want just, right? Uh, okay, you want so I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut you off. Oh, go ahead. I'm just um, making a note for next week. It too, says, so. the last thing it says, it goes, it says that you can still receive the benefits of ketosis while eating a varied and balanced diet through intermittent fasting. And I've heard and I've read articles that if you're intermittent fasting, so let's say you don't eat anything all day. But let's say you eat in a fasted period at like two or four in the afternoon. Is that true? You're getting into ketosis in just well, that short amount of time? Because doesn't it take a few days? Well, so that's that's where they, they're they're uh, wrong or they're like not correct. <laughs> that's the same thing. Um, now, ideally, if our bodies are metabolically healthy, yes, every night when we're not eating overnight, we should wake up in the morning in ketosis. But okay. Most of the people on this planet, their body's completely turned off, fat burning, fat adaptation, which are, we're, we're still going to talk about here in a little bit, and uh, and the ability to make ketones. It's stuck in carb burning mode because it's just been chronically fed carbs all the time. It doesn't never need to burn fat. And so for most people, uh, intermittent fasting is not going to get you to uh, ketosis. And most of the people need 18 to 24 months of continuous keto and fat adaptation to get that ability back in their body. Um, you know, I was somebody that pre keto, I always skipped breakfast, right? So it's now fancy called intermittent fasting. But back then when I was growing up, it was called you just skip breakfast. It was called uh, broke. Yeah. Yeah. Or just not hungry. Like then okay? it was called, I'm just, I don't got a lot of money and I'm just yeah. going to have lunch. I, I was, I never ate breakfast. Um, I also avoided, um, you know, high carb things early in the day because I found that I would just immediately make me want to take a nap. Um, yeah. so I would wait to have my carbs in the evening. I intermittent fasted and I ate a healthy whole foods diet, balanced whole grains, uh, you know, all foods fit. I didn't restrict anything. And yeah. before I started keto, I got up to 220 pounds doing this way. Yeah, um, you ate so, the whole rainbow, like yeah. fruit I, loops and I wasn't eating fast food, Skittles. Um, right? So this this is a myth that this should be all that we need because if it worked, everyone on this planet would be fine and healthy and not be overweight. So uh, it doesn't it doesn't work that way, right? And it's ironic too because they're now suggesting that we cut out meals. So if intermittent fasting is you eat once a day or maybe twice. And one of their their criticisms before of keto was that it cuts out what was they say uh, depletion of calories and nutrients. So now, how are they going to propose that in one meal a day now you can get all of your nutrients? <laughs> oh yeah. So um, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work. And like you said, like three days for most people. It takes three to five days of keeping carbs below 20 for most people to even get to ketosis. So the fantasy that you can eat whatever you want if you're intermittent fast because you're going to go into ketosis every day is not true for most people at all. So, okay. Yeah. And you can really quickly then go back to like, let's say you get to ketosis and then you eat two days of regular carbs, even intermittent fasting, you can turn that off again. You need time in ketosis to get adapted to that state. So, so basically you hate Northwestern college. Oh, do Everything not, about that. Do Is not that what I'm going to say? In the Northwest of Ohio. Uh, I Illinois. Wanna, Illinois. 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 That's how much I know geography. Um, well, uh, yeah. Is that the Midwest? Uh, it's around yeah. some lakes or something. I think it said it's in Chicago. I don't know. So, okay. I, knew was, I knew it was somewhere there. Sue, I don't know. Sue, you know you're listening to a keto podcast, right? <laughs> I'm not sure how you got here. So she's suggesting eating porridge and oats. They fill you up for the day. Oh man. Uh, I, I love porridge and oats before cause it was a great way to eat a bunch of book, uh, sugar and, um, and butter, but I'll tell you what, it never, it just made me hungry again in an hour. So, uh, podcast. but if you're a sugar burner and that's what you're doing, then you should have some oatmeal in the morning. If that's your, you know, if you're not doing a fat burner, if you're not doing keto diet, 
And if, they, if you're not doing a keto diet, she's right. Just okay. agree with me, okay? Sure. You could you could also have McDonald's for breakfast. Just agree with then. me once, if, Carol. If you want to be a sugar burner, like, everything. If you want to be like stuck in carb burning mode, you could have McDonald's for breakfast. You could have cereal for breakfast. You could have a Capri yeah, Sun. You can't for breakfast. have McDonald's for breakfast. You just got to get there by eleven a.m. <laughs> yes, if you're gonna have uh, McDonald's breakfast, you're not intermittent fasting. That's for sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem with McDonald's. Okay. So now moving on, what's rule number seven? <laughs> yes. We're finally, we've had such a great time with this topic and you know, uh, who was the whole Mar family. Mar Martin, Oh, Gary, Gary and, uh, Sue, uh, all, you know, all these great. Yeah, good, well, discussions. Gary's not good. Sue's great. Not Gary. Great, I don't yeah. <laughs> okay. We're finally to the topic of our uh, episode today. Easy rule number seven. Okay. So again, 10 rules to follow to get started with keto for the best results or get restarted. And here's rule number seven, which is no alcohol for 30 days. Okay. What? I know. Whoa, last I'm week. out. Hold on. Stop the train. <laughs> Carol, you've <laughs> gone too far. No, no, no. You've gone too far. Okay. You needed that. What do you mean? No alcohol for 30 days. You don't mean in a row. Do you? <laughs> I do. I do. I'm a buzz. Girl, I was with you up until this point, but I now know. there's no way I, the Lord would want you not drinking for 30 days or something. I, I, right? I like, don't you, you need like sacrament wine or like Sabbath wine? Right. At the, at the beginning, we teased by talking about the clean crafted wine. That's not that we not allowed to say is keto friendly. Oh, so you drink that. You drink that. No. Nope, nope. What if it comes in a box? Is that better for you? Um, if you want to eat porridge and uh, Capri Suns, then box wine is your friend. Yeah. Um, oh, perfect. Perfect. Not for keto. So again, this is these are the rules to follow to get started for the best, fastest results. Okay? If you don't care about fast results, ignore these rules. <laughs> Find another podcast. Okay, so listen. Here's the deal. This weekend, I'm going on a trip to a bunch of wineries in Eastern Washington. Okay. I'm doing wine tasting tours with a friend. And so after this weekend, well, obviously I'm drinking this weekend, but after this weekend, I won't drink wine. Okay. Two weeks because then I go to Vegas for a week. Is that okay? <laughs> Is you there any way to do all 30 days in 14 days? <laughs> and the same way that you can track, uh, in one hour for 30 days. I don't know. Let Well, let me, like we've done with all these topics, I know that you've got the objections that are normal ones that people come up with, right? So let me explain the why. Yeah. Uh, this is what I love to do for my clients that I'll explain the why behind it. And then you get to decide what you do. So you're, a, you're an adult, uh, despite the fact that you wanted me to get you a present. If you were a good boy, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you say the why, and I will complain incessantly. Okay, yes. go. And then you'll say you'll want a present if you go 30 days without alcohol. So uh, that oh, your present could be some clean, crafted, not keto-friendly wine. <laughs> not not to be disclosed as keto-friendly wine. All right. Okay. So Okay, so here's, here's the why. Uh, so the, we're all adults here. Okay, Sue's saying she just clicked on it because it's about health. Well, stay, stay, hang around, Sue. We're, we're happy to have you. So uh, may, maybe you'll learn some things about keto you didn't even know were interesting. So, um, okay, so uh, a lot of people will start out on keto that already enjoy adult beverages and then just switch to low carb ones. And then they wonder why they feel so horrible, why they can't get into ketosis. Um, why they can't adapt, why their hangovers are really bad. And so here's the why. Yeah. Um, so why they keep waking up on the side of the road in a ditch, <laughs> have an empty bag of why my McDonald's. dates never call me back. <laughs> Lots of questions come that's, about. Yeah. I think that's a different podcast too, but yeah, that could be possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so first of all, you know, first of all, first, first of all, off. first of all, <laughs> uh, understanding something that's called keto adaptation. It's also simultaneously is happening as fat adaptation. And so when we've been eating high carb diet for a long time, kind of like I've talked about a little bit already is that we kind of get stuck in carb burning mode. So whether we're burning the ability to burn any type of fuel that we put in our mouth 
we have to have the enzymes and cellular membranes and transport membranes and all this kind of parts in our body that allow us to eat whatever we, um, to burn and, and process and digest whatever we eat. Um, most of us are that are listening to this podcast, most of the people listening, I think, uh, or all the people that I'm working with, they've just eaten such a high carb diet for so long. Uh, yeah. They've been storing fat in their fat cells. Um, it's like their fat burning furnace is down in the basement and it hasn't been used in a decade. And it's worn out. It doesn't work. There's dust all over it. And so the same thing happens in our body. We're stuck in carb burning mode. And when you're in that mode, you have to eat. You're hungry every two hours. And if you don't eat, you crash and burn. And um, so it takes time to get your body adapted to this flexible state of being able to burn fat again. And so it's, I, I think of it as like that furnace in the, you know, it takes three to five days of doing low carb to get to ketosis. And it has to be, you know, for most people, 20 grams or less a day, which we've covered on a different episode, but um, being that low, it takes three to five days for your body to even get to ketosis in the first place. And then it requires um, consecutive days. So not 30 days randomly, but it requires consecutive days. Um, and before I started, what I was reading was that it takes 90 days consecutively staying in ketosis for your body to get adapted to that state. And so, uh, for most people, I recommend like making a commitment of 90 days consecutively staying in ketosis to get, uh, your body to turn on that furnace, start to make those enzymes. It needs to burn fat, uh, enzymes to make, uh, ketones and burn those for fuel and change the cell membranes and all of that. Basically take that furnace in the basement. I think of it as like chitty, chitty, bang, bang, where it's like, like it sounds really bad and it doesn't work what? very well in the beginning. What's that? <laughs> chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Do you know chitty, chitty, bang, bang? And I'm not swearing right now. Song? Okay. No, that Mary, is that a Mary Poppins? Um, or is that a different movie? It was a Disney movie where, um, uh, what's the dude's name that, and the Mary Poppins lady, maybe it was Mary Poppins. <laughs> I'm going to have to send this somebody who's watching. You've seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, right? Or what? Maybe that was just the movie. It was this old car that could fly. I think it was in the sixties or seventies or something. All right. You're looking at me. Girl, like, have you been drinking alcohol on keto? <laughs> no. <laughs> Topo Chico. Uh, all right. It's really just, in your Topo Chico. I'll have to. I'll have to send some stuff to you later. So, to to sir, I don't know what that is. Uh, does that mean you know what I'm talking about, Nancy, or are you thinking I'm crazy? As uh, two separate movies. Okay, so Mary Poppins was one movie, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was another movie. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe Simon's too young to know Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um. It feels uh, good to be too young to know something. I was I was gonna say, like it's it's probably you know, chitty chitty bang bang is just probably a normal Saturday night for you. But um, anyways, we'll 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 keep it clean. <laughs> uh, okay. Right. You don't, you don't think well, that's here's the question. Uh, you're <laughs> sitting there saying you're not supposed to drink alcohol for 30 days, but what if it happens to fall on the Super Bowl? Of course you drink, right? Well, let me explain a little bit more about what's going on and why why it benefits you to avoid it. Now, I say 30 days, but if you can go 60 or 90, you're going to have even better results. Here's why. Um, there's one enzyme in our body called, are you ready? There's going to be a spelling quiz on this one, uh, acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Uh, it's an enzyme in our body that is very weird, but it does two things. It takes fat and turns it into fuel. So we need a lot of it on keto to be burning fat and ketones. Um, and that same enzyme also takes alcohol and turns it into something that won't kill us. So the only reason we can drink alcohol is because our body immediately processes it and turns it into something that just makes us buzzed and won't kill us. That enzyme is part of that process. And so in the beginning of keto, so imagine keto with no alcohol, that enzyme is working and trying to burn fat and make, make energy for us. There's not quite enough of that to go around in the beginning. So your body's got to ramp up production of that enzyme. And so that's part of that keto adaptation phase is your body making more of that enzyme. So that's where it's getting better at burning fat for fuel. Now, if you add alcohol in during that time where there's not enough of that enzyme to go around, 
your body pr prioritizes it over to uh, detoxing the alcohol because that's good because you would die if it didn't do that. Um, the problem is then is it shuts off the fat burning. So you basically completely kick yourself out of ketosis. You shut off fat burning. Um, and also because there's, it's kind of trying to do both, it still isn't quite enough in order to detox the alcohol the way that it was. And so you end up with really horrible hangovers. What if you just do a Zima <laughs> or like a wine cooler or they like a hard like seltzer? Not like alcohol, alcohol, but you just have like a, a hard seltzer. What about, is that? It's, that okay? it's, just, it's just alcohol in general. So one, one shot is enough to turn this off basically. So um, the other thing to know, so no, um, you're turning me off. <laughs> okay. See, Sue knows what I'm talking about. Okay. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang was in the seventies. Okay. Wasn't it, wasn't it filmed in London too? Or was that before you lived there, Sue? Um, or it was, I think it was set in London. I don't know. Um, I grew up in Oregon. I didn't even know there were other countries when I was growing up, but, um, so the way that alcohol, so, uh, affects, so in the very beginning of ketosis, alcohol affects your body in various ways. So for one, um, it suppresses your liver's production of blood glucose. So we still need some of that. And that actually triggers your appetite and cravings for carbohydrates. Um, so if you're not really good at burning fat and making ketones and this alternate fuel source, um, Carol, I'm having internet issues, but are I'm we gonna back. have two? We're gonna have two Simons here. Okay, <laughs> better than one. I don't know what just happened. I got kicked off or something. This is this is. Oh, was it was, was I over my swear word limit? Probably, yeah. It's you got kicked off because you didn't know what chitty chitty bang bang was. So, um, all right. So Movie. we're okay. Going go, resetting free then. So alcohol is um, suppresses your liver production of glucose. And since in the beginning of keto, you're not very good at making fat for energy or using fat for energy or making ketones, using ketones for energy, it turns on your appetite for carbohydrates because that's necessary to keep your blood sugar from going too low. So this is why when you drink alcohol, you crave carby bar food. Um, and also in the very beginning, when your body's not really good at staying in ketosis, you kick yourself out of ketosis and then you immediately crave carbs and sugar. So it's, it's playing Russian roulette basically with trying to stay on your keto. So their comment about uh, Northwest comment about like it being hard, not sustainable. Well, here's a tip to make it much more sustainable for you and to get those better results. Um, and yeah, so even after your keto adapted and you know, 30 days, I'm just giving you a grace period of like, it does take longer to get keto adapted than 30 days. But if, if you're already thinking like you can't go a week without alcohol, like, okay, I'm giving, what about 30 days? Can you do 30 days instead of 90? <laughs> um, what if you don't drink all day, but just like have a scotch after dinner? Well, yes. The, it's kind of like the intermittent fasting myth, right? Intermittent Marcy? drinking. What if yeah, you just do, uh, you're yeah. on an intermittent <laughs> Drinking just do, just do keto for breakfast and lunch and then do whatever at dinner again. Oh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> again, no, you're right. No, you're right. Perfect. Again, the concept is continuous consecutive hours and days in ketosis is what your body needs in order to get that fat burning state. Back. Okay. So, so here's the deal. I'm going off. Like I said, I'm drinking wine all weekend in Washington wine country. We're going wine tasting at wineries very fancy I'm kind of a fancy person as you can tell <laughs> and but then after this weekend i won't drink for 30 days ish, -ish or so it's sure until vegas and then it restarts oh sure it restarts in vegas no you're right that's a really good way to look at it it's, it's not that i'm breaking it I'm just restarting it. You're just taking a pause. Uh, I'm just yeah, restarting I mean, it. It's like, it's a restart. Yeah. It's not a, yeah. It's not a mess up. It's a restart. Just, no, just, you're right. Yeah. Just, Carol, you know, you're right. Thank you. All right. Sue does, says Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was in London. Uh, yeah. Set in London. All right. Look All at right. that. It's a world well, leap. Sue, yeah. you're on the trivia team. This <laughs> You're on our Jeopardy trivia team there. This is this is fun. I hope you guys are enjoying these episodes because you just never know what topics we're going to talk about. We're going to teach you all kinds of great stuff about keto and how to get the best results. But I hope you can see we're trying to have some fun with it too. So 
Um, trying. So what right. do we got next week? Are we done with this week or what do we got? Yeah. You're going you're mean, to berate us more and tell us we can't drink or is it no know, smiling I mean, for 30 days, Carol? Is it no, no joy or smiling? That's rule number 10. Is that rule number 10? And- no joy. Brown right. for, that's I saved that one for the last because that's the hardest one to. All right, and then what do we have next week? Should we talk about next, that? Next week is a game changer. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, fast and easy meals. We're also going to talk about. Um, oh wait, no, that's going to go there. Yeah, uh, one of the game changer rules is um, is the fast and easy meal rule. So I'm going to tell you all about what that is next week. Oops, I can't type here. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, total game changer, fast and easy meals. Uh, this is one of the tricks to making it sustainable. Okay. So that okay. we're going to show that article who's boss. Um, I've got different, all kinds of tips about how to make it sustainable and easier. So Great. fast and easy meals is about making it easy, quick. Uh, you don't have to spend hours and hours in the kitchen. Uh, you don't have to do all day meal prep on Sundays or anything like that. So a total game changer. And, uh, my clients really love this one. So Great. that's next week. Okay. Well, here's, the, here's the surprise that I added in. Let's see. Let's see how you like what I, what I uh, promised people here for your next part. Oh, what is it? Leave a review. Yeah. So it's going to, we're going to, the podcast is going to be coming out and uh, you may be listening there. So leave us a review on iTunes and Simon's going to make a joke about you. I am. Yes. Okay. You will. I, I will. If Carol says so, I will. Yes. Uh, it may not I do be, what Carol says. It may not be that great, but he's going to do that. <laughs> Maybe you're not that great. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, you, you noticed that I didn't promise that I would write the joke, so. <laughs> yeah, no. We got jokes for days. Yeah, yeah. But just no alcohol for 30 days. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yes. this is good. It's motivational. It's good. I'm feeling motivated. Oh, good. And you That's- know what really made me realize? Okay, so I've been going back and forth, as you know, with keto, and like I do it, and then I don't, and then I do it. And what really like drilled it home for me was, um, I think he's had a drink already. Seeing double, yeah. So when, when there were two of you, Sue, Sue was mate. Yeah, we saw two of you because you were drunk already. So yeah, I no, but check this out. <laughs> I went out with my mom shopping the other day because she didn't want to, you know, I was just going to keep her company, right? She wanted to go get clothing and I was like, okay, I was like, I'll hang out with you, you know, like whatever. Right. So I went and like accompanied her and like, she tried things on. I was like, that's nice. That's not, I held the bags. I was a good kid. Right. And I started to crash. I started to get like Mm. low, I don't don't know if they call it low blood sugar. What do they call it? But I started to get hangry and like tired Mm. and um, I was like, mom, I need to go get food. But she was like in the middle of trying on these glasses. I'm like, mom, oh. I'm really hungry. I got to go get food. And then she's like, well, just wait, just wait. And then it like took like 20 minutes and I started to like drop. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? that doesn't happen on keto. Right. It only right. happens for glucose. And then yeah. I was like, okay, I got to go full bore. I got to go full into it. I got to not drink for three days and really do what Carol says. Is that what you said, right? Don't drink for three days? <laughs> well, just put a zero on the end of that if you want better oh, don't results. drink for zero days. I was like, I got to not drink for zero days in a row, you like got, Carol says. This is good. You got to get in touch with your why. Why this is so important. And I can see and hear that it's important for you to be able to go shopping all day with your mom and shop till <laughs> And the yeah. drop doesn't happen till midnight. So Yes, not going... Happening. To the Macy's women's section yeah. is really my why. So yeah. I can walk around the women's clothing section at Macy's. No, but you know what it is? It's like you get a contrast where you're on it, you're on it, and then you get off it, and then you're mm-hmm. like, and you're like, oh, yeah. God, I gotta get back on it. So well, in a lot of get people- back on it, get back on it, <laughs> get back on it. Well, and you know, a lot of people that follow it long term, they do so just because they feel feel the best eating that yeah. way, right? It's not feel the best. I don't really look the best right now. You look way tanner than me, but I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm going to be coming to Phoenix hopefully soon. And I'll work on my tan. Sue, Sue's such a good cheerleader here. I hope you come back each week, Sue. So uh, she says, when you go to Vegas, it 
uh, go, let's see, when you go to Vegas, uh, stay in Vegas, but you're, oh, it's stay, what, oh, okay. I, I think what happens in Vegas Vegas Vegas. stays in Vegas. And forget it, you means. come home and you have a nice sleep and your body will be okay. Okay. So That's she's right. just saying, do what you want when you're in Vegas. Don't worry about it. Carbs don't count in Vegas, I think is what she's saying. <laughs> Carol, I think you're wonderful, but I'm following Sue's advice. <laughs> Oh, Sue's fun. I hope you come back next week. Every week, yeah. put on your calendar, same time. I don't know what what time is it in London right now, Sue. I know it's it's probably like it would be past Simon's bedtime in London right now, I'm pretty sure. So all right. Well, so today's episode has been very fun. Thank you for everyone for watching. It's been yeah. rule number seven. Why avoiding alcohol for 30, 30 yeah. days. We'll yield Brought to you by Budweiser. Us. <laughs> yield faster weight loss and promote faster keto adaptation so you decide yourself we'll see how Excellent. simon does so i'm doing good i'm gonna do good i got this all right much love i'll see you very soon carol thank you everyone for tuning in thank you nancy right. thank you and for watching listening all right we'll see you all soon right. everyone. bye, bye.